Hello and welcome to Meadow Park for game 22 of the Barclays Women's Super League. The season finale sees Arsenal host Brighton for their final WSL game here after the exciting news announced earlier this week that next season the Gunners will be playing all their league fixtures at the Emirates Stadium. It's been a happy home here for Jonas Eideval's side who are looking for a 10th successive home win of the season. If they can pick up three points against the Seagulls, Arsenal will match their longest such run in the division. Last season, the Gunners opened their campaign with a 4-0 win over Brighton at Meadow Park. Today, they conclude business against interim manager Mikey Harris's side, who are on their longest unbeaten run on the road. Four matches without a loss includes two wins and two losses. Brighton could move up to eighth or drop down to tenth, depending upon how the next 90 minutes unfolds here and elsewhere on the final day of the WSL season. Let's bring you the team news and Arsenal already have their league position confirmed. Third spot for a second season in a row. The news was announced this week that Vivian Miedema departs as her contract concludes. No new offer made for the two-time Golden Boot winner. And the big question ahead of kickoff was would she feature from the start? Four changes made for the Gunners. Miedema, no, is not one of them. She is named on the bench. Meanwhile, for the visitors, German goalkeeper Melina Luerk, who has played the last two for Brighton, is replaced by number one, Sophie Bagley. Young player of the year, Maisie Simmons, who's had a wonderful campaign, 18 appearances and a breakthrough into the under-23s. For England, the 21-year-old is replaced by Katie Robinson. Arsenal have handed a debut this afternoon. The team are wearing the 2024-25 kit today. The women's team, the only ones wearing the new threads on a busy weekend for the football club. So of those Arsenal changes, Steph Catley, Kim Little and Caitlin Ford are the outfield trio coming into the side. Laia Kadina, Frida Marnham and Chloe Lacasse coming out. Sabrina D'Angelo starts in goal for Arsenal. And it will be her final appearance for the home team. Another departure announced this week. Dressed in the bright line. This is her 15th appearance for the football club, having joined back in January 2023. Meadow Bank is packed. The noise has been building towards this kickoff. Arsenal will continue to play their cup games here next season, but for one last time, they count down to a WSL fixture. And it's the visitors Brighton in their dark black and lime green kits with black shorts and black socks. Who will get us underway? The youngster, Madison Haley, standing over the ball. And for one last time in the 2023-24 season, we are underway and it's Brighton who play the ball along down that right-hand flank. Some early touches and a good bit of movement from Alessia Russo to find Beth Mead on the right-hand side. Arsenal playing in a 4-2-3-1 formation with D'Angelo in goal. Fox, Williamson, Catley and McCabe. The back four. Pull over. And Cooney cross the midfield pivot with Beth Mead and Caitlin Ford on the wing. Kim Little behind Russo, who is taking up space down the left-hand side. Such an unselfish player, and it's been a fantastic first campaign for the England Lioness, who was crowned April's Player of the Month in the WSL, scored in every game in April. But a little bit of concern here is... Russo just looks to shake off a knock sustained in that challenge and Brighton prepared to take the free kick. 
the visitors lining up in a 4-3-3 three, three. with Bagley in goal, Karabali, Bergsvand, Torres Dottier and Pattinson, the back four, Robinson, Lasada, and Zigiotti. The midfield three supporting Haley, Lee and Elizabeth Turland, their player of the year. Up top, as it's all Arsenal in these opening 90 seconds. Chested down, but then lost by Catley. And Robinson can charge forward for Brighton. Clover doing really well, covering her teammate. The goal kick falls back to Brighton. It's their captain, Vicky Lasada. He's had an illustrious career playing all across Europe. The bright pink boots looking to orchestrate play, decides to play it back. And the long ball chipped down that right hand side, searching for Robinson once again. It will be an Arsenal throw in. And we will keep you up to date with events going on across the WSL. I can tell you that Chelsea have just taken the lead at Old Trafford. Off to an electrifying start in Emma Hayes' final game in charge. Myra Ramirez has put them in control of that fixture. And we've got games across FA Player as well for you to enjoy. You can watch the game between Bristol City and Everton. We also have... Leicester versus Liverpool for you to enjoy and a London derby as well between Tottenham Hotspur and West Ham all the games of course kicking off at the same time a 3 p.m. kickoff on the final day of the season the Sada Assesses her options and plays the ball out to the left-hand side. Pattinson forward. It's a congested midfield, but Brighton do well. And the pass forwards to Haley, miscontrolled. And Arsenal perhaps just lacking a little bit of composure. Settling into a rhythm, it's Lasada again. The header by Turland. Falls nicely for Brighton, the shot. Just wide of the target. It's a good move forward by Karabali. He just nudged Katie Mc McCabe to one side. The right-footed effort. Karabali in a really advanced position. Down that right-hand side for Brighton. who will be pleased with the start that they've made to this game. In his pre-match press conference, the interim boss, Mikey Harris, said that Arsenal was so good with the ball that his side will be, have to be very good without it. D'Angelo misses the pass back, but Catley's there. Cooney Cross goes out to the right. The ball forwards looking for Russo. It'll be received by Sophie Bagley. One of 11 players signed in the summer by Brighton. It's been a difficult campaign for the Seagulls. Managerial changes, but Bagley's presence in goal has made a huge difference for Brighton. They've scored the same amount of goals this season. They've conceded 20 less. Whether Harris will be given the job full time in the summer, we will wait and see. But Brighton have ambitions to be finishing the season far more competitively. 11th last season, they currently sit ninth in the WSL. They'll want to end the season as strongly as possible.
This is Sada does well in the 1v1 versus Ford and Brighton can press forward again. Turland to Lee, who has Mead for company. Does well, the ball played forward, looking for Robinson, who's quick, just not quick enough to keep the ball in play, Katie Robinson. The 21-year-old, who herself has had a massive year, breaking into the England squad, going with the Lionesses to the World Cup. Her contract expires next month, and she said this week that she'll be considering her next moves. She wants to be in the right environment with the right football coach, whatever that will mean. This is her last appearance in a Brighton shirt. We will have to wait and see. Arsenal have possession in their own half. So back to Leah Williamson. Who sprays it out to the left-hand channel where Catley and McCabe lurk. Arsenal committing plenty of bodies forward and here is Arsenal on the attack forms nicely to Alessia Russo. Good, last ditch defending from Brighton. Bagley has both her centre backs in close proximity. Alexa to pass it out to her left. Brighton confident to do so from the back and Arsenal looking to press and apply some pressure. They do so effectively. Russo does so well looking after the ball and playing it to Mead. Plays it back to Williamson and now Catley. along the halfway line to Williamson. This is a better pattern of play from Arsenal. Building, being patient. Ford. Back to her Australian teammate, Patley. Square to Williamson. Chelsea have now gone 2-0 up against Manchester United. In less than eight minutes. There's an Arsenal attacking move. Results in a corner and there's a, a collision off the field of play as well. Katie McCabe sliding, tackling into the camera operators who are quite close to the pitch, it has to be said. Capturing all the action behind the goal in Arsenal's final WSL match. In this ground, Emirates will be their home. Beth Mead with the corner. Comes out and then looks to be fed back into the penalty area, but it's read well by Brighton. McCabe. Good footwork, finds some space over on the right-hand side. The cross comes in. Nodded away by Brighton's Carabali, only so far as Ford. Mead now, switching from the right to the left. As Arsenal look to break the deadlock, play 10 minutes, nil-nil so far. Throw in for Arsenal. An advanced position. Up the pitch. It's taken quickly by Fox, who has the ball now. Goals going in across the WSL in the opening 10 minutes. As I mentioned to you earlier, Chelsea 2-0 up against Manchester United. Liverpool also lead at Leicester. While Spurs FA Cup runners-up are 1-0 up against West Ham. No goals yet, but Arsenal are on the prowl. Here's Ford. 
Nice build up play, but again, Redwell. As is that by Ford. The home crowd making plenty of noise. This left hand side is proving useful as the cross comes in, headed centrally. Only so far is Cooney Cross, who perhaps thinking she might have been fouled there, but play carries on. That's loose from Bagley. And the shot comes in. Caitlin Ford sends the opportunity. Looking to punish Brighton. It was a poor pass, and you can see Bagley's frustration. As soon as the ball left her boot and an apologetic arm in the air as well from the Brighton goalkeeper. Can't afford to do that too often against Arsenal. Searching for their 10th consecutive win at home. On the back of a brilliant result away at Manchester City as well, Arsenal. Hadn't beaten City on their own patch for a long, long time. 2017, I believe. Their victory blew the title race wide open. For Arsenal next season, it will be about picking up a WSL title of their own. Victory in the Conti Cup this season. A piece of silverware for Jonas Eideval. Arsenal want more and more. That's what allured players like Emily Fox, who has just taken that free kick to join the Gunners. US international sign-in for the club in January. Made an offer. She's advanced up the pitch. All of Arsenal's outfield players in the Brighton half. And the hosts make their possession count. <laughs> Catley, another player secured for next season, signed a contract extension. Another year she'll spend at the club that she says feels like home. That's a great play from Russo. Finding Ford, he's in an offside position. Again, we see just what Russo brings to this Arsenal team. She leads the line, she makes centre-backs have terrible, hard-working afternoons, but she also drops deep and can manufacture and link up the play as well. 10 WSL goals in her first season for the club. Also one of the player of the season nominees for the Gunners. Alongside Stina Blackstenius. Victoria Pulova, Leah Volti and Lotta Ruben Moy, who misses out this afternoon. The Arsenal centre-back due to injury, which is why we see Catley, who's on the ball now, filling in that void. Exchanges passes with her centre-back partner, Williamson. Great to see. The England captain returning from a, her long-term injury. That dreaded ACL, she plays the ball forward, looking for Russo. That's a really nice flick into the path of Beth Mead. Mead with the cross. Slightly long. Behind the racing forward as the two wide players look to link up. We've played quarter of an hour, no goals as yet. Karabali with the throw for Brighton as the sun beams down. On the pitch, it's a beautiful day for some WSL football.
McCabe will take the throw in the Brighton half. Finds Russo. Back to Williamson. Fox gains some territory up the pitch. Linking up wonderfully with Beth Mead. Mead finds Little. This is a good chance for Russo. And there is the opening goal of the game. Brilliant build-up play from Arsenal. Slick passing, a brilliant move that began with some great combination play between Emily Fox and Beth Mead. Arsenal had to be patient. And they've got their just rewards. Alessia Russo scoring her 11th goal of the season. It's an instinctive strike. It's a classy goal. And it gives Arsenal a deserved lead. Arsenal 1, Brighton 0. A packed North Bank enjoyed that one. The power in which Russo struck the ball. Sophie Bagley with no chance of stopping that. And the offside flag traps the Brighton attack and Arsenal can press forward once again. Free kick for Brighton. They can send some bodies forwards and look for a immediate response to Alessia Russo's opener. The delivery comes in, as does the header. It's a good chance for Brighton. Headed into a sea of bodies. It was Thailand who made the contact. The Norwegians scored 13 goals in 21 appearances this season. Been a real standout star for the Seagulls. Lee for Brighton, finds Turnan. There's some space for Robinson if she can be found. The shot's taken instead and it rattles the crossbar. Elizabeth Turnan coming close. It's getting Brighton an equaliser. Arsenal on the attack. Supported somewhat and the whistle does blow. There's a Brighton player down injured. It looks like it's the youngster Madison. Let's take a look at that chance for Brighton. It was a really good move. Lee finding Turland and Robinson in far too much space. A really nice decoy. Turland took the shot. Came inches away from drawing Brighton level in this game, of which we've played 20 minutes. Arsenal won, Brighton nil. Did you give that another go as the referee needs the ball to touch the field of play first? McCabe does play it back to Catley. Turn and sprinting and pressing, and it's caused a moment of panic there. Sabrina D'Angelo 
Almost having a moment to forget on her final game for Arsenal. Williamson on the attack for the Gunners. Little out to McCabe. Left footed curling cross. Induces the touch from Poppy Pattinson. Let's have a look at the goalkeeping mistake down the other end, though. Turland sprinting to put pressure on, and it fell neatly for Haley, whose first touch let her down, and D'Angelo able to smuggle the ball. Another big goal in the WSL has been scored in the match between Aston Villa and Manchester City. Manchester City 1-0 up. The same scoreline we have here. One goal so far. Might we see a second with this attacking move? Russo. That's a lovely ball headed clear. Only so far as Catley. Williamson with a slide in tackle ensures that Katie Robinson can't produce any counter attack. Williamson just urging McCabe just to take a moment. The tempo needs to suit the Gunners. And there's some space opening up on that right-hand side. Instead, Arsenal building from the back. And that long ball forward was looking to pick out that space on the right-hand side, but not executed as neatly as the home team would like. And Bagley able to retrieve for the visitors who are a goal down here. At Meadow Park. And that's loose. And a mistake is punished ruthlessly. Russo bags a brace. The Seagulls paying the highest price for a mistake at the back. Alessia Russo, always a live wire in the box. The combination of the pressure between her and Kim Little meant that from six yards out, there was no missing for the star striker who has been shining bright all season for Arsenal. She makes it Arsenal 2, Brighton 0. Russo on for a hat-trick on the final day of the season. Arsenal's pressing, working really well. Dominating proceedings here. At their final home game of the season. Third spot has already been secured for a second season in a row and UEFA Champions League qualifying as well. <laughs> Catley with some assured defending. McCabe now for Arsenal. He's had another brilliant season for the club. Looks to play forward to Russo. Berg's fans there first. Arsenal have the throw. Two goals to the good. Arsenal finished last season on 47 points. Could be 50 by the full-time whistle, which shows how each season the WSL is getting more and more competitive. The points tally is growing higher and higher. <laughs> the 
a nice opening for Arsenal. Mead looks to play the ball back to Little. Fox finds Mead in a good position. Again for the Gunners. Looking to cut it back unselfishly. But Brighton avert the danger only so far. There's that corner where Emily Fox takes the throw. Russo. Back to Fox. He was just unable to control for Arsenal. And there's a sigh of disappointment around the ground as a promising Arsenal attack is paused. But the way that Arsenal are playing, it's not too long before the ball is back at their feet. Williamson switching it up. McCabe in a foot race against Carabali, which the Brighton player wins. Can play as a centre-back, but also slots into the right-back role this afternoon for Brighton. Russo covering so many blades of grass. Her work rate is absolutely exemplary and she's been rewarded thus far with two goals. Her tally could increase this afternoon. We haven't even hit the half hour mark yet and Arsenal are in control of their final WSL encounter against the Brighton side who as I mentioned earlier, have had a tough season. They had a very, very busy summer, signing 11 new players from 10 different countries. Melissa Phillips was in charge. She joined Brighton last April, was sacked after just 10 months. When that decision was announced, it was met with quite a lot of surprise. David Weir, the technical director of the football club, said that it was vital for the progress that they wanted to see in the Women's Super League to make that change. They recruited Mikey Harris. I say recruited, they promoted Mikey Harris from across the academy into the women's team. He's taken the reins since. Navigating right and away from any relegation troubles. Yeah. Had a promising season in terms of building their fan base, the sellout at Broadfield when Arsenal came to visit. They also broke the attendance record at the Amex as well and have announced exciting plans of their own to build a purpose-built stadium. They currently play at Crawley Town's ground. This standalone stadium would be built to fuel the growth of the women's game in Brighton. So Arsenal move to the Emirates. Brighton have exciting plans of their own. Can they find a means of breaking down this Arsenal defence and slicing the deficit? Not if they give the ball away like that. Forward, it's played to Ford. Cleared by Brighton to D'Angelo. The rumours circulating are that the Arsenal number 14 could be making her way to Aston Villa following the end of her contract with Arsenal and that Daphne von Damsela, the 24-year-old who joined Villa on a three-year deal in June last year, could be making her way to join Arsenal, although a £200,000 clause would need to be paid for the Netherlands goalkeeper. Could be a switch between the two with the transfers to come in the summer. But for now, though, 15 minutes left of this first half and Arsenal were on the attack. Little forward to forward. That's really neat football from Arsenal. Could have been even neater if that cross had found the on-Russian Russo or Mead. Have a second chance now, though. The home team 
Cooney cross back to Catley. Russo on a hat trick. Russo with the chance to shoot wide of the target. That was a big chance and she knows it. There's a lovely ball played forward and Russo does so well. Shakes off the attention of the Brighton centre back. Is still able to tee up the shot. Just not the placement required to meet Sophie Bagley and Brighton take the goal kick between the centre backs. Haley for Brighton. Supported by Robinson, who's done really well to sprint back and offer some sort of ball forward. She's not found by her teammate. But Carabali does well for the visitors. The pass searching for Turland. Pull over there for Arsenal, who can reset. Another nice turn from Russo. Pull over on the attack for the Gunners. Wins them a throw in. In an advanced position. Arsenal have won all 11 WSL games against Brighton. An aggregate score of 39-2. They have scored three plus goals in all but two two of those matches and they could be 3 up by half time if they carry on this pressure. Just over 10 minutes to go of the first half. Ford has Carabali and Robinson for company. Manages to find McCabe. Russo now. Ford loves to be in these attacking situations for Arsenal. Carabali stands tall. Forts the run but concedes the corner. And the sea of red and white. The pack stand. We'll be delighted with the way that Arsenal have managed this game so far. Is there more to come? Means delivery. Headed away. Retrieved by Russo. To Cooney Cross. Fox. With the cross. It was Catley still forward for Arsenal who made the final contact. And Brighton are going to stick to their principles here. It's Bragg's fan who's going to take the goal kick to Zigiotti. Midfielder dropping deep to support her defence. The ball is played forward. Williamson wins the battle. But Brighton still have the ball. Played forward to Robinson. Up against Catley. Not many teammates around her. Robinson still manages to get the cross. Brighton appeal for a corner. But it will be an Arsenal goal kick. And Robinson... Such a threat, such a potent outlet for Brighton. As Arsenal mirror and play out from the back. Forward again for Arsenal. 
Ford cuts it back. McCabe now. The shot comes in. The challenge comes in as well. McCabe back on her feet. Booze ring around the stadium. That challenge came in on McCabe in the penalty area. Referee disinterested. If you're just joining us, Arsenal, two goals to the good against Brighton and Albion. Alessia Russo with both of them. And since the start of the year, only Bunny Shaw has scored more than Russo. And no player has attempted more shots in the WSL than the player who in these 38 opening minutes has worked so, so hard for the Gunners. We see how they're dropping back deep. The England Lioness having a brilliant campaign overall for the Gunners but particularly this calendar year as well and it will still be a, a busy summer for Russo and her England teammates like Williamson on the ball despite not appearing at the Olympics there's still competitive games and friendlies to be played Beth Mead the Arsenal forward this week talking about a potential burnout that these players are beginning to suffer due to the packed calendar of games and fixtures and the demands of being a part of the WSL. But they're bringing plenty of energy to this final game of the season. Russo fouled by Vicky Lasada. Alessia Russo back on her feet, which is good to see. She's on a hat trick, let's not forget. So we'll be wanting to be a part of the conversations going on with her teammates about how best to utilize this free kick. That may well retreat back. Into the area, which is exactly what she does. Mead. And McCabe instead standing over the ball for Arsenal to enter the final five minutes of this opening half. McCabe hits it straight into the gloves of Sophie Bagley. The former Manchester United goalkeeper made the move to Brighton in the summer. Spent two seasons with the Red Devils, understudy to Mary Earps. Said she learned a lot in that time, but she didn't make a single WSL appearance, which motivated her move to Brighton, where she has played a huge part in their season. One of the standout performances for her was against Manchester City. Only two clean sheets this season. Both were away from home, and Brighton will be looking to build upon their home form, which has been disappointing this season. They'll be looking to halve the deficit before half time as well. Every game in the WSL has had a goal on the final day of the season. We've had two here 
Villa trailing 1-0 to Manchester City, whilst Everton are 2-0 up against relegated Bristol City. Liverpool, one goal to the good away at Leicester. Spurs still 1-0 up against West Ham and Chelsea. 2-0 up at Old Trafford against Manchester United. Can Chelsea secure a fifth title in a row? It looks like that will be the case at halftime, but plenty of twists and turns. This has been the story of this season. Arsenal played their part beating Manchester City. Stina Blackstenius with a brace on the 89th and 92nd minute. Arsenal have shown that they're more than capable of competing against the best in the division. It's been losses against other teams that have caused them to stutter. Their last defeat back on the 15th of March was against Chelsea. At Stamford Bridge. Vicky Lasada, the Brighton captain, has been booked for that. A couple of challenges in this game so far. And that one, the accumulation of them as the free kick is taken and kept in by Ford. Fox now to Mead. Offside flag is up. Plover just unable to time the run. As we approach the final minute of this first half. Also in a really good position whether we'll see some changes at the break. Sometimes these games are used as occasions to blood some youngsters into the team and Arsenal have plenty of them named on the bench. Amongst them, Katie Reid, who has handed her debut against Bristol City this season. Michelle Adjaman, who returns from a successful loan at Watford. And Tyre Goldie as well, the 19-year-old on the bench. But amongst those young players, of course, is Vivian Miedemar. An iconic Arsenal player who's delivered so much, so many goals for the Gunners and the WSL. The news announced this week that she will be departing. Raised a lot of eyebrows, that decision. No offer made to the two-time Golden Boot winner, who, if rumours are to be believed, could be on her way up north to join Manchester City. Miedemar didn't feature against City. There have been a few injury niggles there been a frustration on her way to recovery from a brutal ACL injury that also left damage to her meniscus on her knee. Not fit enough to start for Arsenal. Maybe we will see her in the second half. We're going to have two minutes of additional time. Two minutes for Brighton to try and halve the deficit. Turning with the shot. Stings the gloves of D'Angelo, who rolls it out to set Ford on her way. Ford with acres of space to run into. Chelsea now 3-0 up against Manchester United. Could be winning the title courtesy of goal difference. Cooney Cross finds Williamson, he plays it forwards to Mead. Mead with the cross. Little looks to control. And set up another attacking move for Arsenal. Finding Ford. And 
perhaps time for one last meaningful attack before the halftime whistle blows. Ball moving from the shadows into the sunshine. Back into the Arsenal half, only temporarily lowers Williamson. Plays it out to the right-hand side. The cross comes in. Almost falling perfectly for Russo. He plays it back to McCabe. Little to Ford. Ford able to turn and open up her body. Fox has Mead in support. But no third before half time for Arsenal. The whistle blows and that concludes the opening 45 minutes. Arsenal in cruise control of this encounter. At the break, it's Arsenal 2, Brighton and Havaya in nil. Let's take a look back at the highlights of the opening half. It was the visitors who sent an early one inside with this Karabali effort. Arsenal grew into the game and Ford launching this shot from range before the deadlock was eventually broken. Some really patient build-up play down the right-hand side from Arsenal. Linked to this brilliant finish from Alessia Russo. April's player of the month. She received that accolade this week and celebrated it with a goal. And Brighton almost responded instantly. Elizabeth Turland there, leading goal scorer, with two chances, including this one, which took a deflection to rattle the crossbar. And momentarily panic Sabrina D'Angelo. And on the note of panic, that moment there could have caused problems for the Arsenal goalkeeper down the other end, though. Brighton were punished for trying to play out from the back. Russo bagging her brace. And on a hat-trick, Russo came close, doing all of the hard work, just missing the target, much to her frustration. Arsenal were pushing and pushing for a third. Katie McCabe's free kick, easily gathered by Sophie Bagley. And there was a chance late on for Brighton to half the deficit. They were unable to do so, so it means at the break here, it is Arsenal 2, Brighton and Hovabi and Neil. The second half to come on FA Player. Different from the rest. <laughs> Diamonds on a finger, that's enough. That's it, that's it. <laughs> so if we start with Kings of Leon, is it milk in particular? Yeah. Talk me through this one. Are you a big Kings of Leon fan in general? I feel like just in general my moves can go from one extreme to another I like so much different stuff but with Kings of Leon like in the car with my parents and stuff I think yeah. I've always had these type of music played and milk for me just the way it starts slow and then it gets upbeat yeah. I love it yeah are you like a big fan of kind of like indie bands is that the sort of thing you listen to or is it does it when I'm driving, I'd say I listen to like indie stuff, and okay. but it, I mean it can go from indie to something else. Yeah. It just depends <laughs> on the mood, really. And what about in the changing rooms? Uh, people have got similar kind of taste to you, or does it vary massively? Yeah, I think some of the girls are similar to me, but yeah. before a game, we like a bit of house music, and, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and I love that as well. So it's, yeah. it's mad. So maybe like Kings of Leon when you're in the car driving to the training. Yeah. Then once you're with the girls, girls it's house music. House. Yeah. <laughs> and then if we go for a classic. We've got Pink Floyd here. Is that a band that you grew up on? Yeah, growing yeah. up, loved them. And there was, I remember they done like collectors items and me and my cousins were trying to collect all the stuff. I think <laughs> it's just what our parents and stuff were listening yeah, to. Yeah, we used yeah. to have a DVD, like a CD thing, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And it'd just be playing all the time when my mum's yeah. cooking and stuff. And yeah. I think that's just who I am, the way I've been brought up. Yeah, yeah. Any songs in particular when you were growing up that would be played around the house for Pink Floyd? The Wall. Yeah. I can't like, think, I just love them all. Yeah. Now, slight change as we go from Pink Floyd to someone polar opposite to Pink Floyd. We've got Justin Bieber here. Is it You Smile? Was that, was that yeah. the one? Yeah. So growing up, I was a 
big believer. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few of them, yeah. you're not the only one, you're um, not the only one. When he used to do his tours, so he yeah. went on tour twice around the UK and I went to Liverpool, Manchester and Birmingham every the two times, so I've seen Wait, him live six times. You did three times? The He's... same tour, so I've seen him six times, but two different tours. <laughs> I used well, to be obsessed. So your, your family who were playing you Pink Floyd, trying to give you that sort of education and you're going, I need to see Justin Bieber three times here. What, what was their reaction to that? <laughs> I think I just love music and yeah. I have since I was a kid and yeah. whatever made me happy my parents would be up yeah, for yeah, it yeah. Um, and Justin Bieber, <laughs> I used to love him. Do you still like have a cheeky little listen to some of his old stuff? Yeah, I still yeah. play it I reckon once or twice a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a lot of you. I like that. Any, is it You Smile or any other songs as well? I like all of them again. Mm -hmm. Fair. <laughs> and then again, switching it up, Jerry Cinema. We've had a few people say Jerry Cinema actually. Mainly Scottish, but yeah, talk me through Jerry Cinnamon. I just like it's upbeat and yeah. that it's a sing song, but it's upbeat and I think it can get you like going and ready. Yeah. But also like my little cousin's a massive fan of him Aww. and we went to see him when he was in Manchester and spending time with my family. Like I was obsessed with music and now my younger cousins are and yeah. I took him and it was his first concert and he knew every single word to every song at yeah. 11 and it's like, wow, that I'm producing a prodigy of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Take him under your yeah. wing, yeah, yeah. But, no, I think his music's great and yeah. it can be in a concert or festival, whatever, it suits everyone, I think. Yeah, it sounds like it's like a real sing-along one, mm -hmm. like, if you know everyone is up there yeah. singing, right? And then, it sounds like you've been to a lot of like live concerts, is that something you like to do when you've yeah, been Yeah, in my spare time, I think yeah. I like going and seeing people live, I think it's different. Yeah. And you get to see the personality more and yeah. I enjoy it, it gets yeah. you out the house. What's your favourite concert you've been to in recent years, would you say? Um, I went to Kings of Leon recently and they were good, I really yeah, enjoyed yeah, them. Yeah, they would be amazing live. And then we finish it off with France and the Machine. Is it Hunger particularly? Yeah. yeah. Why this one? Hunger's my favourite song, I think just the lyrics to it, it's nice and chilled and I think just from the young girl, I don't know the reason behind it, I've just loved the words yeah, to it and yeah. the way the song goes and I listen to it all the time and don't get bored of listening to yeah. it. I can <laughs> listen to it on repeat and still sing every single word to yeah. it. I just think Florence is amazing. When I went to see her live. You've she, seen everyone live. <laughs> she comes across dead slow yeah, yeah, on yeah, yeah, Spotify yeah. or yeah. whatever but then Live, stage, she's up yeah. and wild, yeah, and yeah. that shocked me to be honest. <laughs> and then, out of these five, what one would you play to kind of get everyone going before a game? Would you say probably Jerry Cinnamon? Yeah, are they Liverpool girls? Are they, are they feeling a bit Jerry Cinnamon? Are they, yeah, I they... think the majority, but you can't please everyone, <laughs> can you? <laughs> and then, what about you've just won a game, three points in the bag, which one are you choosing to celebrate um, with? Could be Justin Bieber, you know. Yeah. I think everyone knows the lyrics. They might pretend yeah, yeah. they don't like them, but do. you they can't not sing secretly. along. <laughs> yeah. And then to see it out, you could choose one song. If, if you want to, you can say no, but it sounds like you're confident. Just give me one line of yeah. any of these songs, what would it be? Um. <laughs> I heard a bit of Jerry Cinnamon before. A bit, a bit of the accent coming out. She's well. a belter. There Different from the rest. <laughs> Diamonds on a finger. That's enough. That's it. That's it. That's better than most people have done. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for your choices and cheers for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Are the rest of the girls fans been dubs then? Are they not, not feeling it? I think they were you? fans before they heard my rendition of it. <laughs> you <laughs> and, turned and, them off. Yeah, <laughs> and now, now it's not me, so. Right, we have got five songs that you've chosen here that we're going to go through. A little, little bit of a mix yeah. that we have here. We're going to start off strong with some end dubs. Girls, talk me through this one. Why did you choose this one? I've always loved it, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, I know the rap, or, or all of the rap, and yeah, I just a song that I like, enjoy, yeah. and I'm very hyped after it, so much to the annoyance of the ears of everybody else, probably. Um, but yeah, no, I just love the song. I've seen them live in November. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. A little reunion tour. Good, yeah, that, no, yeah. it's a good, good concert, so yeah, blast from the past. And, yeah. are, are the rest of the girls fans been dubs then? Are they not, not feeling it? I think they were you? fans before they heard my rendition of it. <laughs> you <laughs> and, turned and, them off. Yeah, <laughs> and now, now it's not me, so uh, I'm off the music. You're off the music, you're not <laughs> yeah. allowed anymore. Fair enough. Next, we've got Afterglow, a bit of Wilkinson, Becky Hill. What are you feeling about that one? Yeah, just ultimate hype song for me. Yeah. Um, I actually seen it live this summer. Um, it's 
up there with girls for, for my top yeah, top, yeah. so it was a tough choice. So yeah, I seen it live and it was just unbelievable. Um, listen to it before every game, get it on in the changing room and it's one yeah. that, that we all love and I think it builds up nicely and yeah, then we head out pumped ready to go. And then next we've got, I'm guessing Scottish roots here, <laughs> Jerry Cinnamon, Canto in particular. Tell me about this one. Yeah, Jerry's from like 10, 15 minutes up the road yeah, from me. Yeah. Um, I think everybody in Glasgow thinks they sound like Jerry Cinnamon when they sing. <laughs> um, we probably don't, but... You definitely do. You definitely do yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can see uh, it. <laughs> yeah, no, just again, it's, it's a hype song. It reminds me of, obviously, living away from home. It reminds me of family, friends, wherever you go in Scotland. Yeah. You, you hear it, and whenever you're speaking about music out with Scotland, somebody brings it up. So, yeah, yeah uh, he's doing class, to be fair. We listen to it before national team games. It's always on when we're warming up. So, yeah, absolute anthem. Uh, and then next, another belter. Actually, the last two are proper belters, which I love. And this yeah. one is an anthem. Now. Natasha Bedingfield, Unwritten. Is this one you've been listening to for a while? Do you know what? I've actually not listened to it since very, like, soon after we got promoted. It was our sort of song the full of last season. Whenever we won a game, we'd all be in changing room, it'd be blasting, we'd all yeah. be up singing in a circle. Um, and it got us through the season. Um, we obviously sang it. I sang it quite loud in front of the fans and the mic was turned off after the second line. So, um, yeah, it's just got the best memories of, of promotion party. Um, so I think it's... It's nice to hear now, but I don't think I'll ever beat that moment of, yeah, of the promotion. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just best day of my life. So it comes with fond memories, great friends, great staff, and all my family were down there on promotion day. So as I say, one of the best days of my life and a top song. It's a top song. It's also because it's like such a pop song, but now I feel like it's a hype song as well. Yeah. Like when you listen to it and you're singing it, everyone's like acting like it's a rap song. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Especially it. as it gets into it as well. And you know, you've got the clap, you've got your arms in the yeah. air, and there was good footage of us doing it, all staff, all players in the changing room after promotion. Um, and we actually got a follow from, from the artist herself after Ooh. it. So uh, yeah, no, we're, we're buzzing with it. Don't be that. And then talking of belting out songs, <laughs> I think I heard a bit actually <laughs> <laughs> before you came on here. We got Carrie Underwood, Before He Cheats. Possibly one of my favourite country songs, but yeah. just favourite songs yeah. in the world. Is this one that you belt out? Yeah, it is an absolute bit. It would have been my first song in the morning. Um, yeah, got to warm up to it, maybe. but yeah, yeah, absolutely intense. But yeah, karaoke song, I think it's one that even people that don't like country know and enjoy. And even if they're singing the wrong words, it's, it's being screamed at and it's loud. So yeah, it's a bit of me. Um, and yeah, I just love it. I say you can sing it the top of your voice. Have you done this one on karaoke before then? Yeah, I have done it on yeah. karaoke, yeah. yeah. I've done it on karaoke. I've done it more times just in the car on my own, absolutely yeah. screaming. So Fair enough. when I pull up at lights, it's not the best one to be belting out next to the people next to you. You get one of those where you're pulled up and you get to the side <laughs> and you just see like people looking yeah. in being like... <laughs> yeah, no, I've had a few of them, especially at the chorus. It's, it's probably a sight, but uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. And then if we were to choose any of these songs to hype everyone up before a game, what are you choosing? Out of those songs, I'd need to go songs. Afterglow. Um, yeah. I think it's the best sort of like changing room song. As I say, everyone on the team likes it. It builds up and yeah, it just gets everyone going. What one are you putting on if you've got the three points in the bag? Are you, is it going to be unwritten again this season or do you think you're going to have to switch it up? No, I, do you know what? I think switch it up. I think last yeah. season was just protect it at all costs, leave it, don't yeah. try and sort of drag that on. So. I don't know, one I would put out there, Life is a Highway. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that's one that everybody knows. It does gear you up, be good after a win. Yeah. So I'd throw that into the mix, but good decision. Well, thank you for your choices. <laughs> thank good you mix. very much. Appreciate talking, and I hopefully I'll hear a bit of Carry On Wood soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm out sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, have for me. Cheers. Hi, I'm Leanne Kiernan, and this is my Ultima Fiber Side. Uh, my goalkeeper, I would have Courtney Brosnan, one of the Irish girls, so I think she's, um, she's been brilliant, for sure. Defender, probably Millie Bright. I think um, she's um, very hard to get past in the league, so I would definitely rate her highly. Kim Little is a must. I think she's um, she's amazing. Since coming into the league, she's she's been um, unbelievable. Let's go two up top. 
Christina Armstriker. Eh? So Alessia Russo, she can bang in the goals. She's very good. And Bunny Shaw, baller, yeah. Welcome back to Meadow Park, where on the final day of the season, after 45 minutes, Arsenal looks set for a 10th successive home victory. 2-0 up against Brighton, and Alessia Russo breaks the difference between the teams, but the Gunners have dominated possession. Eight shots in the first half. They will be looking to build upon that. For Brighton fans watching, the half-time break brings big breaking news from the men's team. Roberto De Zerbi will leave the club after their season finisher tomorrow. The Seagulls will be recruiting two new managers over the summer for both their senior sides. And we will see a change for the visitors at the break as well. Mikey Harris, the first of the two managers to ring a change, which we will confirm with you shortly. As we get back underway here. Arsenal lining up with D'Angelo in goal, Fox, Williamson, Catley and McCabe are back four. Palova and Cooney cross the midfield pivot. Mead, Little and Ford supporting Russo, who has scored both of the goals so far this afternoon. Brighton on the attack. Williamson looking to link up with Fox. Lee with the press and then appealing for the throw in as well. Their decision goes against the Seagulls. Brighton have scored 26 goals so far this season. The exact amount 
that they managed to notch in the last campaign. If they can manage to find the back of the net here against Arsenal, it will be a record for them in the WSL. They've looked half of the ball well so far in this second half. They just need to try and find a way past Kimnita, which they can't do. But likewise, Arsenal can't find a way past Guru Bergsvand, who clears the ball for a throw-in right by that corner flag. Whilst I thought Brighton had made a change at the break, it looks like they've stuck with the same 11 that started the match, which did have two changes, including the inclusion of Sophie Bagley in goal. The Seagulls have been playing in 4 3 3 formation. Katie Robinson had come into the side, but she has been switched out. Confirmation of that coming through for the club's young player of the season, Emily Simmons. So it's Bagley in goal, Carabali, Bergsvan, Torres Dottier and Pattinson the four. Simmons, Lasada, and Zigiotti, the midfield three. Hayley, Turland, Lee up top for Brighton, who are having to do some defending now. As Arsenal have the ball on that left-hand side. All games in the WSL kicking off at 3 p.m. on the final day of the season. Arsenal had already secured their spot in third for a second season in a row. For Brighton, there was the possibility of climbing up to eighth, but also dropping to tenth as well. And there have been plenty of goals in the division so far. including four at Old Trafford, where Chelsea looks set to earn a fifth WSL title in a row. For Brighton, if things stand, they will finish the season ninth. Two places higher than last season. A season where they earned 16 points as Chelsea make it five at Old Trafford. Mary Earps, potentially her last game for Manchester United, conceding five at the Theatre of Dreams. It's a bit of a nightmare for them. It's a bit of a nightmare for Arsenal to have to defend this cross that comes in. Barely any Brighton bodies in the box and they deal with ease. The ball's played forward to Russo on a hat-trick. Can Arsenal find a bit more of a clinical edge in this second half? Russo now in on a hat-trick. Russo, and that's a brilliant block. The attack still alive for the Gunners. Fox. Back to Mead, who in turn plays it back to Williamson. Williamson hooked towards Little. Little again, looking to pull the strings for the home team. It's the final WSL game here at Meadow Park next season. Arsenal will be playing all of their games at the Emirates Stadium. All their WSL games and Champions League group games will be played there. The Adobe FA Women's Cup, Conti Cup will be here at Boreham Wood. So next step 
with four decades of trailblazing from the home team, whose average home attendance this season has been over 30,000. Two set-out games at the Emirates, three WSL attendance records broken, a Continental Cup title to boot. on every one of these players' minds and that of Jonas Eideval will be that this time next season they want to be pushing for the WSL title as turns in on goal. And good pressure from Williamson. Means that D'Angelo is able to save Haley. Played that through ball. It was a neat run from Terland who controlled the ball well, hold it up, just couldn't find the target. Sabrina D'Angelo playing her final game for Arsenal, her 15th appearance. Williams and the long searching ball for Russo. He's been given defences in the WSL headaches all season. She's given the Brighton goalkeeper a headache there as well. As possession is given away and it almost falls to Russo. But there was a foul in the build up. I think it's the initial challenge rather than that of the one on Russo. We'll see the replay here. Little's crossing and it's Karabali who made the challenge. And the referee points into the spot. And you can't help but feel there's one player's name. Ready to prepare to take this penalty. Caitlin Ford is holding the ball. Steph Catley back on her feet. And Marcel Alessia Russo is on a hat trick. There's no mood for sentimentality here. Kim Little, who is the club's penalty taker, will try to put the Gunners 3-0 up from 12 yards out. Kim Little, the Arsenal captain. Sets her sights on making it free on the final day of the season. And hits the bar. A reprieve for Brighton. The Arsenal captain has been in this situation many times under far more pressure. Her strike bounces off of the side of the bar and away. Perhaps that penalty was written for Alessia Russo after all. But Arsenal will shake themselves off. Kim Little has 17th year as a pro. Always makes such an impact. She came off of the bench at half time, last time out against Manchester City, completely changed the tone of that game as Arsenal came from a goal down to beat City on their own patch. Their first win there since 2017. Still 2-0 here at Meadow Park. Still Arsenal in cruise control, but it's Brighton on the attack. Space 
Down the right for Karabali. Thinks about the first time cross. Ricochets back to the Brighton right back who conceded that penalty for the challenge on Steph Catley. Sigiotti for Brighton. Back to Berg's van. You may hear the volume go up a notch, and that is because it looks like. Vivian Miedemar is warming up. The crowd are making themselves clear. They want Viv. One of the best players to ever grace the Women's Super League. One of the best to wear an Arsenal shirt is leaving the football club. After seven incredible years, many thought perhaps there might be a few more. It looks like she will feature as we approach the final half hour. The ball squared along that six yard line where Russo lurked. Winning Arsenal a corner. Beth Mead to take for the Gunners. The right footed ball on the outskirts of the 18-yard area. Fox over on the right-hand side. Has Cooney Cross in support and the pass is a poor one. Haley capitalizes for Brighton. It's Arsenal who have the advantage here at Meadow Park. We'll bring you the scores from across the country as Aston Villa are 1-0 up against Man City. Everton 3-0 to the good against Bristol City. But all of that can wait because here is the moment that Arsenal fans have been waiting for. We are going to see a triple substitution. Frieda Marnham coming on for Cooney Cross. <laughs> Steph Catley makes way for Leia Kadena. And there will be no hat trick for Alessia Russo, a club legend of the future, will be replaced by a club legend of the present, but only for 30 more minutes. Vivian Miedemar. Welcome to the pitch. And that welcome tells you all you need to know about a player who has done so much for this football club. Joined from Bayern Munich back in 2017. 125 goals 
and 50 assists in 172 appearances, which is quite incredible. Mead. Plays the ball. And with her first touch, Vivian Miedemar makes it Arsenal free, Brighton and Ovalbian nil. All of the class that she has brought, all of the pedigree. She only ever needs one touch, one moment. Good direct football, Williamson into the path of Beth Mead, who knew exactly where her teammate and her partner, of course, would be. And Miedemar slotting home on her final appearance for Arsenal. And every single one of her teammates goes over to celebrate. An immediate impact off of the bench. And I'm sure for many Arsenal supporters, it screens the question yet again, why are they letting her go? One touch makes it Arsenal free, Brighton and Ovalbian nil. 25 minutes left to play. Kim Little penalised for the challenge, which gives Brighton a free kick. Taken by Zigiotti quickly. Arsenal on the attack again. And she couldn't, could she? Miedemar with another great chance for Arsenal. Just watch Miedemar time in the run. The quick feet to cut back onto her left foot. Deflected. And she wins her team a corner. Mead will take. And there's another. Arsenal extend their lead even further. The corner causing enough problems. It was a really good delivery from Beth Mead. The header came from Kadena and the Brighton players and their goalkeeper Bagley unable to prevent the ball from hitting 
the back of the net. Zigiotti and birthday girl Karabali were there to try and prevent the fourth. But Arsenal have found that clinical edge. 4 0 up. And that fourth brings with it some more changes. And for Arsenal, you see Laurevin Voita coming on in place of Emily Fox. Changes for Brighton. Lee Gong Ming coming off. Emma Kohlberg coming on. And tough circumstances for the Seagulls. As Arsenal's bench have been coming on and making a positive impact, the visitors find themselves four goals down with over 20 minutes left to play. Miedema manages to play the ball forward despite being surrounded by Brighton players. Another massive goal in the WSL, Aston Villa. Equalise against Manchester City. Although with Chelsea 5-0 up at Old Trafford. Blues have it in their own hands anyway. To see a superior goal difference. What an amazing WSL season it has been. It's only going to get better and better. Bigger crowd, larger viewing figures, the quality of football improving, facilities improving. League will continue to attract some of the world's best players. And no doubt we will see plenty of exciting changes over the summer. Vivian Miedema will be one of the players whose signature is most sought after and she's showed her class in the minutes that she's been on the pitch so far. 20 left to go here. Ten home wins in a row for Arsenal. Next season, we'll be playing the WSL games at the Emirates. It's a foundation to build upon. Miedemar, again in the right place. Skirting along that six-yard area. Gives a thumbs up to her teammate. Marnham with the delivery. Arsenal strength and depth off the bench. We haven't even mentioned Stina Blackstenius yet. He looks set to be extending her time with the club by another season. Maybe she'll come on later in this game. We wait to see as Beth Mead is on the attack. Header. Eventually cleared by Brighton. Little 
back to Kadena. Good play by Palova, who has made 32 appearances this season, more than any other campaign for Arsenal. Two goals, five assists in 21 WSL appearances, uh, another nominee for the Gunners Player of the Season, an award rated for by supporters. We haven't even seen three of the other nominees this afternoon. Stina Blackstenius, Leo Volta, who's out with injury, as is new Lotta Wuben Moy. Those three also in contention. Marnham plays it back to Ford. Karabali's there. Her clearance goes out for an Arsenal throw in. Palova hustling away. But Brighton carry the ball forwards. And the offside flag eventually going up. Four goals here. Five in the game between Chelsea and Manchester United. Spurs and West Ham are Currently drawing one all in the London derby. Liverpool 2 0 up against Leicester. Bristol City, who will be playing in the Barclays Women's Championship next season, losing 3 0 at home to Everton. And Rachel Daly has drawn Aston Villa level against Manchester City on Carla Wars last game. As the offside flag goes again, the Arsenal back four organised. Playing a strong, healthy line. What is also strong and healthy is the scoreline for Arsenal. Four goals to the good. Managing yet again to score three plus goals against Brighton. Forty-three-two is the aggregate score of all of the encounters that. Arsenal have had against Brighton. They've won all of their matches against the Seagulls. Final quarter of an hour to go. Big summer ahead for Brighton. Question marks over who will lead the team, who will continue to mould the new sign-ins. Who will help them to be more competitive in fi fixtures like this? Because it's all far too easy for the shot to come in. From Wien Reuter. It was announced before kickoff the player of the season would go to Lotta Ruben Moy. She won 41% of the vote. It has been confirmed. Even without her this afternoon, Arsenal looks set to earn a clean sheet. They so look to attack. Down the other third, Miedemar prevented in her tracks by Karabali.
Here's a chance for Brighton. And it's a brilliant stop from the outstretched leg of Sabrina D'Angelo. It's a great chance for the visitors. It ricocheted off Williamson and out. But as we've seen down one end of the pitch, Miedema marking her final game in an Arsenal shirt. So too, the Arsenal goalkeeper with a moment of her own to protect that clean sheet that she and her teammates will so desperately want. It's an audacious effort from distance and that won't cause the Arsenal goalkeeper any problems. Would have taken something quite spectacular from Vicky Lasada from that range. In that moment of goalkeeping quality acknowledged by the home faithful. This Karabali will require some treatment. Let's take a look, shall we? At the goal from Miedemar. He couldn't quite write the script. Mead with a wonderful assist and perhaps one of the most natural goal scorers we have ever seen in the Barclays Women's Super League. Miedemar didn't even need to look up. A wonderful finish. And a moment she and the Arsenal fans have savoured this afternoon. Calabari won't be able to continue. And in her place, Lee Meng Wen comes on. And we can see in shot there the interim boss, Mikey Harris. But he will be in charge for the start of the new season. Or if Brighton decide to go elsewhere, it's going to be a very, very important decision to make. The club have already enjoyed record renewals, for season tickets for next season, the appeal of the job that he's been doing. Brighton look to build positively moving forwards after a tough season. They look to be finishing this campaign ninth in the Barclays Women's Super League. But they're unbeaten. Run on the road will be coming to an end today. Arsenal basking in the May sunshine. Basking in a very positive end to the season as well. Back to back wins. Challenge on McKay wins Arsenal a free kick. Played back to Williamson. Arsenal centre backs exchange passes. Forward ball to Mead. Picked up by Lasada. Cave interacts early. 
Brighton keep possession. Well into the final 10 minutes of the season. Arsenal for Brighton, nil. Sophie Bagley returning in goal for Brighton. And despite the heavy scoreline, it's been one of the positives for Brighton. It's the reduction in the number of goals that they conceded, the strength that they built defensively, but they've been torn open by Arsenal. Could have even been five, but for Kim Little's penalty miss. Arsenal winning possession back once again. Miedema, a nice turn and a nice pass as well to Mead. Mead with the cross, forward with the run. Taylor shirt was pulled. Caitlin Ford sprinting. You can see the really positive run on that left-hand side. Made the commitment to get there in her fourth WSL season. Went back into the side to start this afternoon. More changes are coming for the final five minutes for Arsenal. Caitlin Ford coming off. Michelle Adjaman coming on. Recently signed a professional contract with the football club. Gets her first couple of touches of the ball. Adjaman had been on loan at Watford. In the Barclays Women's Championship, we've seen a number of youngsters really excelling in the second tier of the football pyramid. She is one of many returning to her parent club. And to build that experience and break into the first team next season. Arsenal will have another corner. Their last one. Ended up with their fourth goal. What can Beth Mead produce over on that right-hand side? Offering the short ball. It's McCabe who will take the corner for Arsenal. Goes direct with it. It's Redwell and Brighton have a counter-attack. Kim Little sprinting to shadow Mangwen, who has possession still. Back to Pattinson. He finds Bergsvand. Stefanovic for Brighton. Trying to switch up play, but... Williamson is so intelligent with her movement in the region of the game. Makes the interception. Over on the right now, Brighton. Attack and win a corner. Is there a late consolation on the cards for the visitors? Turn to take. Nodded away by Arsenal. It's defending well from the corner. 
Marnham picks up and Miedema links back forwards with Marnham, who's in on goal for Arsenal. Can make it five. Does make it five. Arsenal hitting on the counter-attack, defended the corner superbly and then go down the other end. And it's Miedema who bagged a goal and then provides an assist for a fellow substitute who broke through on goal, had plenty of time to think about it, but still had the composure to slot beyond Sophie Bagley. It's been a good afternoon for Arsenal. Who make it five on the final day of the season. And Jonas Eideval will be thrilled with this display. The final WSL game to be played at Meadow Park. They've wrapped up business in quite delicious style. And talking of wrapping up business, Chelsea have gone 6-0 up. A dream day for the Blues. Fran Kirby scores on her final game for the club in the same way that Vivian Miedema has scored. Club legends enjoying great final days of the season. Idabel in conversation with Miedema on the final between the two of them. How many of us hope that Miedema will continue to play in the WSL? There will be many, many football clubs wanting to secure her services. And we've played 90 minutes and that name rings around the stadium. Can't help but feel it's been Miedema's afternoon. As Arsenal finish the season on a high. They're on the attack again. Inflicting a heavy defeat. Eight more minutes left to be played. Brighton being pushed all the way into the final, final few minutes. Sorry for Brighton, held up by Williamson. Plays it out to the right hand side. To Kohlberg. Back to Stefanovic, who's dispossessed by the skipper. He plays it back to D'Angelo. He'll be enjoying her final few minutes. She's disappointed with the distribution out. Savine Reuter. Brighton have another corner. Another chance to test Arsenal with a routine from the training ground. The delivery comes in, punched away by D'Angelo. Recycled by Brighton, Pattinson as well at the first attempt, not the second though. No way past Little.
five more minutes of the additional time to go. Arsenal looked to be in the kind of mood where they could play all afternoon. So fluid. And confident on the ball. Five goals up. Reflects the dominance that they have exerted on this contest. Miedemar looks to feed the ball through to Ajaman. It's cut out by Brighton. Miedemar plays the ball back to Malova. Mead does really well to go on under that switching up feet. Mead hits the deck. Back on her feet though to try and win the ball for Arsenal. So sharp and fresh. And this forces a mistake from Bagley, whose clearance only so far as Marnham. Little. Arsenal gunning for a sixth. Good pressure from Arsenal. Brighton defence looks increasingly more tired. Arsenal just seem to be looking to turn up the notch even more. And that's credit to their fitness and stamina, but also the impact of that very strong bench. Substitutes Frieda Marnham and Vivian Miedema and Leia Kadina all coming on to score. Still time for that late constellation. As the cross comes in. Dealt with calmly and expertly by D'Angelo. Chance for one more attack for Arsenal. Poppy Pattinson doing well not to concede the corner. But it is a throw in for Arsenal. Miedemar jogs over to provide an option, as does Mead. Mead with great skill once again. Is it back to Williamson? Williamson's cross ricochets up at the back of Lasada, and with less than 30 seconds on the clock, perhaps the final action of the game will be this Arsenal corner. We've had a flurry of them in the second half. Mead lifts her right arm aloft. The delivery comes in. Headed away by Brighton. 
He have played the eight. But need to have a chance to cross. It's almost another for the Gunners. Miedemar twisting and turning in the box. And then delivers the cross. And there is the full-time whistle. The 2023-24 season concludes on a real high for Arsenal. A 5-0 thumping against the Seagulls who will have a busy and important summer ahead. All of the headlines, all of the noise, all of the celebration, though, revolves around one player, and that is Arsenal's number 11, Viviane Miedemar, coming on off of the bench to score with her first touch in her final game for the football club. Full time here, it finishes. Arsenal 5, Brighton and Ovalbian nil. Let's take a look back on the highlights of this game. Arsenal exerted dominance from the very start. It didn't take too long for the deadlock to be broken. Some really good build-up play down the right-hand side before this thumping finish from Alessia Russo. Scored another really important goal. Although Brighton did come close to equalising just moments later. Elizabeth Turland, who's had a superb campaign for the Seagulls, coming close with her effort ricocheting the crossbar, but then applying this pressure that almost enabled Madison Haley in on goal. Talking of pressure, though, Arsenal soon capitalised. Russo bagging a brace before half-time. Her work rate and industry have been exceptional all throughout that opening half, and it was rewarded with two goals. It was almost rewarded with the match ball. Russo doing so well to beat the defender. Open up her body, just couldn't find the target. Brighton looked to slice the deficit before the break. Some really important pieces of defending, blocks and tackles, stopping Russo from getting that hat-trick. And a good save was required as well from D'Angelo to prevent Turland before Arsenal were rewarded with a penalty, their second half start. Commanding. And their lead almost extended. And then Miedemar coming on off of the bench, producing this fantastic finish on her final match for Arsenal Football Club. It might look like an easy finish, but that requires fantastic technique and a natural goal scoring instinct that we haven't seen the like of in the WSL, quite like Miedemar, who almost got a second. It was four for the Arsenal when Kadena's header from a corner couldn't be cleared by the Brighton defence or goalkeeper. Arsenal substitutes making a real impact, but Brighton, though, didn't let their heads drop. And Arsenal go goalkeeper Sabrina D'Angelo on her final game for the football club, preserving their clean sheet. And the gloss was added. Miedemar providing the assist this time for Frieda Marnham to make it five. Cool, calm, composure. Makes it 10 wins in a row at home for Arsenal Football Club. The season finishes here at Meadow Park. Arsenal 5, Brighton and Hope Albion 0.